we got one more thing we need to look at, and this is the final things. Um, resonance hybrids. So what happens if we end up with a double bond somewhere on our molecule and a single bond somewhere else? How do we represent this? So in our resonance hybrids, let's first look at sulfur dioxide, SO2. Same rules. We have sulfur and we have one. Oxygen, we have two. We find oxygen on the periodic table. It has six electrons, so we get 12 electrons to build our structure from there. Sulfur is right below it, which means it's going to give us six more electrons. We add these up. We've got 12 plus 6. We get 18 electrons to build our structure. Notice there is no formal charge up here, so we don't need to add or subtract any electrons, just to help me remember. So, sulfur dioxide, we've got one sulfur, and oxygen, I'm going to put my sulfur right here. I'm going to attach an oxygen, and I'm going to attach an oxygen. So I've just used up, in my skeleton structure, two, four electrons. As I work my way around, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. I get to use 18, remember, and I've used 16. So I have two more I can use. Those might as well go right here on the sulfur. I have nowhere else to put them. Okay, now I've used all my electrons. I don't have a formal charge. Um, we're going <coughs> to, excuse me, come back and revisit resonance structures if we need to. Let's check our answer real fast. You might see a bit of a problem if you've done enough of these. But let's find out. Oxygen has two, four, uh, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This oxygen has two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. The sulfur has two, four, five, six. Remember, it has to have eight. And what we learned in the last part was, well, somebody's going to have to share because we only get 18 electrons. So we could say, all right, you oxygen, you're going to have to share and that's perfectly fine and oxygen is happy with that and this is where we get into resonance structures now if we look at our molecule this is different because what if we would have decided that oxygen over here needs to share instead we decided it's gonna share over here we have to represent both of those possibilities because both are gonna occur when we make sulfur dioxide or when it occurs naturally. So we go ahead and we use some arrows to show that both of these can occur, which means we've got our sulfur in the middle and this time we're going to put our double bond going the other direction and our single bond going where our double bond was in the last one. I'm going to put brackets around these just to make it easier to see that we're drawing two different structures here but there's no formal charge so not entirely necessary now I gotta be careful how many I put in over here I've got one two three four just like I had over there when I drew four and I've got one two three four five six around this side and then I've got my two here if I go back with number six and check all of those now have eight around them and I've just figured out what this whole step five is about, where I need to draw resonance structures in order to represent all of the possible configurations for my sulfur dioxide. Another example of this is nitrate, only this one also is a polyatomic ion. It's got a formal charge. Let's draw it out. We've got nitrogen and we've got oxygen. There's an equals there. Um, we've got three of those oxygens. We find oxygen again. Oxygen has six electrons. Six times three is 18 electrons. Nitrogen, I've almost buried it, but it's right there and it's got five valence electrons. So let me move this over here, five electrons. We add that up, we get eight plus 18 plus five, 23 electrons. But don't forget, we gotta check and see if it has a formal charge, which it does. And this formal negative charge means that an extra negative particle or an extra electron must have come in here. So we have to add a negatively charged electron. We get 24 electrons to build this with. 
I'm going to write that out right here, 24 electrons to build this with. So I've got my nitrogen, and I know I've got three oxygens, so I'm going to bond those on here. I start adding my electrons around the outside edge. I've used 2, 4, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. I've used them all up because I only get 24. Um, I need to add brackets if that's necessary. So I come around here. It is necessary because I have an overall negative charge. I need to draw resonance structures. I don't know if I'm there yet. Let me check my answer first. I mean, we might be able to see that something's going on here, but um, let me just walk you through it. If we count up all of these oxygens, they all have eight electrons around the outside edge. Our nitrogen does not, and I can't just add two electrons here. Sometimes people try to do that, but that's an illegal operation. So we go back to what we learned before. We're going to say, all right, this oxygen, you're going to need to share those with that nitrogen so that it can have eight valence electrons around the outside of it, which is perfectly fine. We go and we check our answer again down here, and everybody is happy. But what if we would have decided that these should have shared? Or maybe what if these should have shared? So we need to represent that. And these are our resonance hybrids. I'm a little bit limited on space, so I'm just going to fit this in here as best I can. Again, these all have a negative charge. I've got nitrogen. This time I can put the double bond over here and the single bonds that direction. This time I can put the double bond going down, single bonds in this direction. Let me just fill it out so you can see. Again, these all have a full octet rule of electrons. Kind of running out of space, I apologize. One thing to note is that everywhere we have this double bond, we only have two lone pairs um, because we only have 24 electrons to build this whole thing with. So that is resonance structures. Next thing we're going to look at is naming molecules with covalent bonds.